for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Uh, Mr. Dollar, this is Wilbur Runyon. I planned to meet you at the Dallas airport, but by the time I had you paid... Oh, it's all right. Uh, sorry you went to that trouble. I took a cab in. Are you at your office now? Oh, uh, yes. I'll be right over. I, uh, I hope the home office didn't think I was foolish asking for your help in this matter, but... Oh, no, they didn't. Not after paying off four policies in one employee group in so short a time. Well, that's the way I figured it. Accidental deaths at the oil wells are one thing, but, well, murder puts a different light on it. Yeah, it usually does. I'll be there in ten minutes. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Employees Cooperative Group Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the syndicate matter. Expense account item one, $106.40. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Dallas, including cab fare to the Alamo building, where I contacted Wilbur Runyon, manager of your Southwestern Division. You, uh... Read my report to the home office, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, what there was of it. Well, there isn't much I can add to it, I'm afraid. Even the sheriff at Topello doesn't know any more than what I wrote. With the new oil strike, Topello's a boom town. That always means a certain amount of trouble. Four murders seems like an extra large helping, though, even for a boom town. I don't know what to think of it. Of course, practically every man working in that field is insured with us under the group plan, so it isn't unusual that we've paid off in all four cases. No, but it is unusual for all four men to die the same way. You said that in each case, the victim had been beaten to death. The murders all followed the same pattern. That would seem to indicate that they'd all been done by the same person, or persons. Oh, that's right. And collecting the insurance money might seem to be the answer if all the policies had been made out to the same beneficiary, but they weren't. Who did benefit? In all four cases, the wife of the victim. Well, that still doesn't rule out a syndicate. Well, what do you mean? Killers can be hired, Mr. Runyon. They collect their share of the insurance after an unhappy wife becomes a merry widow. Uh, not in this case. Why not? Oil company that made the strike at Dupello is one of the best. They pay the premiums for their employees. No payroll deduction. So? So two of the wives who collected didn't even know about the insurance until we contacted them. That could be an act. I'll let you judge that for yourself. Now, uh, last man killed was a driller named Gonzalez. Mexican. I haven't paid the claim yet. I asked his wife to come in this afternoon to pick up the check. She'll be here in a minute. This money comes from the men who killed my husband? Uh, no, Mrs. Gonzalez. It's insurance. Life insurance the oil company paid for. Two thousand dollars? Well, that's right, ma'am. You have a family, Mrs. Gonzalez? Somebody you can go to? My mother, my brother in Sonora. But my husband, Manuel, he always wanted the baby to be born here in Estados Unidos. Everything was going to be so good. Did your husband have any enemies? Enemies for what? He never hurt nobody. There were three other men killed, Mrs. Gonzalez. Did he know any of them? I don't know. No, I don't think so. We were in Tupelo for only three weeks. Three weeks? Uh, I forgot to mention that in my report, Dollar. All the men killed have been newcomers to the Tupelo field. Well, where'd they work before they came there? They all come in from the same job someplace else? Oh, no, all came from different places. None of them had worked for a couple of months or before hitting Tupelo, according to employment records. Was your husband out of work for a long time before you went to Tupelo, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes, senor. We have no money. He worry all the time. Did your husband drink or gamble? Oh, no, senor. He was a good man. He tried hard to work every day, even when he was hurt. Hurt? Where? How? Well, it was some accident at the well. You know anything about that, Runyon? No, but uh, one of the other women mentioned the same thing. Uh, an accident the week before the killing. What did your husband say about his accident, Mrs. Gonzalez? Well, he told me he falls off, but he has marks all over for two days, he stay in bed. I try to make him stay longer, but he cries. He say he must get up and go back to work. He says he's afraid he will lose the job. 
Well, not for an on-the-job injury, he wouldn't. Well, there isn't any record of an on-the-job injury, Dollar. He was afraid for something. He wouldn't tell him, but he was afraid. <laughs> How do I get to Tupelo? Oh, uh, Trailways bus depot right across the street, but... Like I said, even the sheriff is stumped on this one. I'm not going to see the sheriff. I'm going to get myself a job in that oil field. Oh, I see. You want me to contact the company, make sure there's an opening? No, don't contact anybody. We already know of four openings. Expense account item two. Five dollars and twenty cents for a used suit of dungarees and a pair of work shoes. Item three, six dollars and twelve cents. Bus fare from Dallas to the Tupelo oil field. I found quarters in a rundown boarding house, and at seven the next morning I was at the employment office. Before nine a.m., I had a shovel in my hand and was digging a sludge pit. Hey, you, a new man. Knock off a minute. You talking to me? Yeah. Come here. What's your name? Johnny Dollar. Well, I'm Bull Farrell, straw boss on this job. Hi. Smoke? No, oh, thanks. New man comes on the job, I'd like to get to know him. Help him along if I can. Where'd you work last before you come here? I was, uh, I was out of a job for quite a while. Oh, that's too bad. No money coming in gets rough on the fella. Yeah. You broke? I ain't being nosy, Dollar. Just thought if you was, I might figure out a way to help. Thanks. I'll get by, all right. Well, if you do get stuck, let me know. All right, you can go back to work. He was friendly, all right. A little too friendly. I was a stranger, but he wanted to help me out with money. And when I said I didn't need it, he didn't like it. It was too late to go back to him without making him wonder. I had to figure out a way to make him offer again. By lunchtime, I had it figured. I left the well and crossed the field to of the office. I went up to the payroll window. Something I can do for you? Yeah. I just signed on this morning. When's payday? Weekend Wednesday. You get your money Thursday. Any chance of getting a little advance? I'm broke. Your first day on the job, what do you think this is? Well, I got to get by until payday. I got to eat. I can't help that. Advances are against the rules. Well, thanks, anyhow. Hey, just a minute. Yeah? You need some money. See Bull Farrell. See Bull Farrell. All roads led back to the straw boss. And seeing him wasn't hard. He was leaning against the wall of the payroll shack when I came out. Hey, Dollar, wait up. Bracing the cashier for an advance, huh? I could have told you that wouldn't work. You're right, it didn't. Why didn't you come to me like I told you? All right. You want to lend me some money? Well, I wish I could, but uh, I'm just a working stiff myself. Well, then why the offer? I thought I'd send you to Frankie Roebling. Runs a tool department. Aunt or somebody died and left him a bundle. He likes to help guys along. Just like that, huh? Well, he'll expect a little something for his trouble, a little interest. After all, he's taking a chance. You're new on the job. You want to see him or don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see him. He said the tool shack... Uh, don't bother him on the job. Room 12, the Capella Hotel, tonight. for Frankie Roebling. I'm Roebling. You Dollar or Prescott? Johnny Dollar. Ah, oh, uh, deal me out of here. Come on to the next room, Dollar. I understand you need some dough. That's right. How much? How much can I get? Enough to live on until payday. If you ain't planning on taking any trips, where do you live? Kill Gallon's boarding house. Uh, 20 bucks see you through? Sounds all right. Yeah. And on payday, you'll drop in and give me uh, the 30 back, right? 30 for 20? Well, just to show you appreciate the favor. Well, you wanted it, don't you? All right. 
You want me to sign some kind of a note? An IOU? What for? I'll remember it. And if you forget, I'll remind you. Twenty dollars. And four dead workmen. There was a big gap. No way of linking them together. But somewhere, the pieces had to fit. Then Thursday came, and I drew my first pay. Hi, Dollar. Get your dough all right? Huh? Oh. Oh, yeah, Bull. I got it. $32.80. Well, only three days. Frank Roebling will be expecting to see you tonight. I know. He just asked me to remind you. Some of these roughnecks get absent-minded and makes it tough on everybody, especially themselves. Don't worry, Bo. I got a good memory. More than 50 men were in Roebling's room that night, all of them in work clothes, all of them giving him money, and none of them enjoying it. I waited until the last of them paid up and drifted out. Well, Dollar, I see you hanging back where the other boys are shelling out. I want to see you alone. Yeah, yeah, I know. That means you want to talk, and when you want to talk, it means you want to stall about paying. I only had three days' pay coming. You knew that when you borrowed the money. I had the boarding house to pay. I have to live, don't I? Do you? All I'm asking for is more time. All right, darling. I'll give you more time next payday. Only then it'll be 40 bucks, not 30. Suppose I say I won't pay it. What do you do then, Robling? Take me outside? You thinking of getting hard, Dollar? No, no, Robling. Just curious. Yeah. Big, too, ain't you? Big, hard guy. Next week, 40 bucks. I figure by next week, you may soften up. John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I went into a couple of the honky tonks along the main drag and tried to strike up conversations with men I'd seen in Roebling's room. But they shied away from the subject like skittish horses. I was ready to give it up when a man I recognized from the job came over and set his beer down next to mine. Mind if I sit down? Help yourself. <laughs> My name's Prescott, Wally Prescott. Yeah, I know. You were behind me in the pay line this afternoon. Yeah. And I saw you up at Roebling's room tonight. What were you doing there? Paying off? Yeah, I saw you too. But you didn't pay off. How do you know? I heard some talk later. Roebling and Bull Farrell. It's none of my business, maybe, but uh, you better pay. I'm short of cash. Look, a lot of us are short. I'm just telling you for your own good. I'm on the hook myself. If they don't like it, let them sue me. Uh, that isn't the way they work it. How do they work it? Bronsky and a couple of the others could tell you. If you don't pay up in full by next week, you're liable to get worked over. If that doesn't convince you? Yeah. Well, a few guys have died around here since the field opened. Too bad a few guys didn't have a talk with the sheriff instead. About what? A beating in a dark alley from a bunch of guys you can't identify? What would it prove? And what happens next when the guys you want behind bars can't be put there? Every payday, I just about managed to pay off. I got a wife and two kids, so I got to borrow all over again to feed them. Bronsky's in the same boat. So are a dozen others. I wanted to walk and think about it. I left the main drag behind and started toward the boarding house cutting across lots on the gravel walks between the trailers. Mister? Yeah? Could you give me a hand? Where are you? Back here in the trailer. What's the matter? Oh, so the butane tank's clogged or something. My stove won't work. You got a flashlight? No. I'll see what I can do, though. Haven't you got a... Oh! swirled over me, and then I was sucked down into a whirlpool of blackness. When I came out of it, I was alone. I could feel the gravel biting into the side of my face. After a while, I managed to get on my feet. 
Take my way to the boarding house. I fell across the bed with my clothes on and passed out again. Accident, Bo. Isn't that what usually happens? A uh, rough town. I'd have known better than to get liquored up on pay night. Might have known that's what happened when you didn't show for work this morning. Why don't you save it? We're alone. Oh, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You and Robling had me worked over. I wouldn't go around saying foolish things I couldn't prove if I was you. Things could be worse, you know. You might have been hurt as bad as Prescott was. Prescott? Yeah. He got you talking through a bottle last night, and somebody resented it. He's over at the hospital. Ain't saying much today, though. Guess he sobered up. Guy with two kids. Probably lose a whole week's work. Roebling likes him, though. He'll see him through. You better be back on the job tomorrow, though. You got obligations, too, you know. They're due next Thursday. Don't worry, Bo. I'll be paid off in full. <laughs> Expense account item four, five dollars to Dr. Wayne Libet of Tupelo for patching up some of the damage done by Frankie Roebling's bill collectors. Item five, 80 cents, round trip bus fare to the county seat at Langham, where I laid the story on the line for Sheriff Arthur McMahon. How much of this can you prove, Dollar? Not a speck of it. I could probably put a couple of deputies on it, and with luck, we might be able to hang a loan shark charge on Roebling. He'd get bail and scare all the witnesses out of town in five minutes. Sure he would. Besides, I want him for murder. I want it as bad as you do. Yeah, I know it. Everybody's been on my neck for this Tapello mess. Letters from civic groups. They're all coming to churches. They yell for action, but they forget about evidence. When they get in a position where they could testify personally, that's when they lose their tongues. Prescott can testify to the setup. You think he'll testify now? After what happened to him just because he gave you a warning? Can he point to one single man and line up and say he did it? No, neither can I. Wait a minute. Suppose you got him trying to kill somebody before they succeed. What do you mean? I was jumped last night for failing to pay Roebling. Gonzalez and the others drew one beating that way before they were killed. Yeah, I see what you mean. Roebling expects me to kick him with 40 bucks next Thursday night. Suppose I don't pay him again. You willing to be the clay pigeon on this? You keep me tagged next Thursday night from the minute I leave that hotel. I'll be there. But if we stop them from killing you, we still wind up with an assault charge. They all know they've done murder before, though, Sheriff. When you take them in and split them in different cells, each one is going to be worrying about how much the others are talking. Somebody in that syndicate is going to get nervous. I went back to the job. For the first couple of days, my head throbbed and my sides ached until the beating finally wore off. Old Farrell was at his post outside the payroll shack when Thursday came. I saw him speak to a couple of the men. With me, he didn't think it was necessary. When we knocked off for the day, I headed straight for the Tupelo Hotel in Roebling's room. Uh, hello, Dollar. Hello, Roebling. Come up on business or just to talk again? I came up to tell you I couldn't pay you this week. Oh, it's too bad. I'm sorry to hear it. I had an accident. Had to pay a doctor bill. I borrowed 20 bucks from you, and you'll get it next week. 20 bucks. That's bad business, Dollar, to lend money without interest. You gonna do something about it? <laughs> to a big guy like you? No, you're too big for me. Much too big. You know what I'm gonna do? I got an idea. I'm gonna make that 20 a gift, Dollar, from me to you. No strings. No strings at all. I left the hotel and hit the main drag as I had the week before. I started to sweat. If the sheriff and his deputies were around, I couldn't see him. I pretended to have quite a few drinks in a half a dozen bars before I headed for the boarding house. Once I got away from the center of town, the streets were like a cemetery. Dollar? Who's that? Yours with me. Fellas you met last week. Wanted to take you to a party with us. No, thanks. Come on, boys. We can do it here. All right. Come on. Come on. Should have listened to Prescott. He told you a couple of guys was killed. Okay, boys. Give him the full job this time. All right. That's enough. I got four deputies riding herd on this party. First one of you to move stops a bullet. Now, just stand and get your hands up. You all right, Dollar? 
Yeah. Where the devil were you? Crashed in the car on the way out, turned into the driveway across the street. How'd you know where to stake out? This big mouth laid it out for his playmates in the hotel bar right after you left. My deputy was standing less than 10 feet away from him. Okay, so I start to beat a guy up. Let's get in and pay the fine. Sure, I got a half dozen murder warrants here in the name of John Doe, too. What do you want to do about them? <laughs> Where's your corpse? Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Prescott and Bronsky and 20 other men are in jail right now, protective custody. And they've all made statements. Some one of them is bound to recognize one of your boys. Sure. We got all of you except Frankie Robley. He's the boy who's going to pay the fine, Bo. While you sweat it out, he'll pay a fine for loan sharking and then get out of the state. Huh. Who are you bluffing? You guys keep your mouth shut. You got nothing on any of us. Let's all go in and wait and see, huh? They wavered, but they didn't break. We knew that by Monday morning, Robling would have a high-powered attorney in to spring him on a writ. Robling was getting jittery himself, though. He didn't know what was going on inside, and it was killing him. We watched him from the upper window of the courthouse. Look at him down there. He's more nervous than the ones we got here under lock and key. Yeah, been hanging around all day. I could only get him in here for 24 hours. On the loan charge? Yeah. He'd bail himself out before he got the key turned. Hey, who is that he's talking to? Jailer. Going over to the cafe to get supper for the others. Every time he crosses the street, Rubin tries to pump it. Oh. That's a frightened man, sure. He could blow up any minute. Not unless we find a way to light the fuse. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe we can get a match under him. Oh. By putting on a show for his benefit. Suppose he thought we were going to bring Bull in here tonight and work him over. I don't handle prisoners that way, Dollar. You don't have to. All we want is for Robling to think you're doing it. Is there a telephone over in that cafe? No. Yeah. Call over and get your jailer. On the way back, he can tell Robling that Bull's getting a workout tonight. I don't get what you're driving at. What do you think Robling will be tonight after he gets that piece of information? Right down there where he is now, sweating it out by proxy. Very well. Then what? About 10 o'clock, get Bull out of the cell and bring him in here. I won't manhandle him, darling. Listen to me, will you? You bring him in and seat him over there. If Robling's across the street, he'll see it. Yeah? Who's that deputy of yours, the, the big guy? Mike Larkin? Yeah. After we get Bull in here, we pull the shades. Then we march him right out again and put Larkin in that chair instead. We can stage it right. We put the overhead lights out and turn that desk lamp on the chair so it throws shadows against the shade. From where Robling stands, it'll look like the shadow in the chair is Bull's. We can also make it look like we're giving him a terrific beating. Then what? What would you do if you actually got a confession out of somebody in this room? Go in the next office, type it up, have him sign it. So that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Typewriter in there is right next to the window. Then you bring Bull in to sign it. He won't sign a confession. No, but he'll sign a denial. It isn't what Bull signs that matters. It's what Roebling thinks Bull Farrell is signing. <laughs> Yeah, what are you pulling me in here for? Don't take a minute, Bull. Just want you to sign this. Sign what? What is it? You can read it. It's a statement you made when we brought you in, denying any connection with the murder. So what do I have to sign it for? Routine, Bull. All right. Give me a pen. Let me get back to sleep. Here. Use mine. Uh. Uh. Shake hands, friend. You've been a real big help. All right, Joe. Take him back to cell. Yeah, here's hoping, Donna. Won't take long to know, Sheriff, if Robling thinks that... McMahon. Yeah, Charlie? Good. No, I'll handle it myself. Let's go, Donna. It worked? Yeah. The deputy I staked out of the cafe said Robling bolted like a rabbit as soon as Bull took your fountain pen. We'll get him at the hotel. it up. There were six of them all together. Bull steered the suckers to Roebling for half his take and kept a staff of three muscle men to enforce the payoffs. The girl who got me into that dark trailer park was the wife of one of the muscle boys. Expense account item six, same as combined totals of items one and three, $112.52. Transportation from Tupelo to Dallas and back to Hartford again. Incidentals and miscellaneous were covered by my earnings on the well job, proving that I live within my means. Expense account total, $236.04. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.